Anne and Angus will present on their current joint progress concerning declining mortality in certain demographic groups in the U.S. There has been a remarkable decline in mortality in the U.S. among people of middle age and among the elderly. Annually, the CDC puts out this compendium and they always document the closing of the black-white gap in life expectancy. You can name me your favorite European country and I can pretty much guarantee you that over this time period, mortality fell at about 2% a year. What happened in the U.S. was really quite different. White, not Hispanics in the U.S., their mortality stopped declining and actually started to rise. This is happening to whites who are on average wealthier than Hispanics, while blacks have higher mortality rates but they're falling very rapidly. The increase was due to accidental poisonings, drug overdose suicide and alcohol-related liver mortality, what we've come to call deaths of despair. Other countries are making progress, and the U.S. white non-Hispanics have stopped making progress. Now, classifying which drugs are responsible for the drug overdoses is like trying to shoot at a moving target. It seems like we're possibly moving now from prescription drugs being the biggest driver back to illegal drugs. The group that's being hammered are people with less education. 2000, it looks like these deaths of despair are sort of the largest in the Southwest. And now there's not a part of the country that hasn't been touched by this. It's not an urban or a rural phenomenon. It's basically throughout. People with a high school degree had the largest increases in mortality. People with a BA continue to make progress. Every state has seen that rotation where the middle-aged people report worse health and the pe older age people report better health. As you get older, the effects of age are getting worse and worse and worse. And if you look here, you see the same effect for a percent not in the labor force. If you look at marriage rates, you see sort of the same thing here. But you can once again see each successive birth cohort of the people without a BA are doing worse than this. This cumulative deprivation we think of as a long-term process of decline for those without a BA. A steady deterioration in job opportunities begin with those leaving high school. It's hard not to see the changing social mores here. Your grandmother and grandfather could not have moved in together without getting married. They couldn't have had children. This is now normal, um, and it seems not to really work very well. The longer one lives in this environment, the worse outcomes become. So here's our tentative story, and it really is tentative. Slow collapse of the white working class that each birth cohort entering the labor market without a BA after those born in 1945. Men start with lower real wages if they're later born. The wage profiles change with each cohort. There's decreasing or zero returns to experience after age 40 for cohorts born 1960 and later. If you've only got a BA, you just have less rewarding careers for later cohorts. Those, together with the changes in social mores, have led to lower marriage rates, for those who do get married, there are much higher divorce rates, so there's less labor force attachment, more mental distress, more difficulty socializing, more pain, more drugs, more alcohol, more suicide. We think of the opioid epidemic as a major scandal. However, we don't think of this as a primary cause. The next generation of retirees are likely to be in worse health and mental health than current retirees. Why have European countries not suffered in the same way? Europe has much better social safety nets, they have a much higher tax burden, largely through value-added tax. This is really, for us, a huge argument for single-payer healthcare, simply because this is eating the labor market. We spend $3 trillion a year in the United States on healthcare. If you match that to what the next highest in the world does, it would save us about a trillion dollars a year.